Hello. Hello, um, you won't be able to join today, so I will try to host instead of him. So let's wait one more minute and then we can start with the agenda. See if somebody else joins. Okay, um, there is a tiny forum today, so we may be quick. Um, if you want to, please record your name in the meeting notes. I will share them in the chat. Can you give me just a quick egg if you can hear me? I feel like I'm talking to Wall a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. All right, now it feels better now. Um, anybody new on the call who would like to introduce your, themselves? I see all familiar names. Okay. Um, if you want to please add your topics to the agenda, I added just one. And I have a vague feeling that it was resolved a while back, but well, keep me honest here. So we have an automatic closing mechanism for issues. So if they are rotting there for two months, they get closed, but we don't have the same thing for PRs. So they are piling, which is shameful if they don't get any reaction, but it's I mean, there's no point in having them if there is nobody pushing them forward. So um, any takers on having the same stale and frozen and closed uh, mechanics for PRs as we do for issues? Um, yeah, I think it makes sense. Um, I, even my own PRs, I forget to close them at times. Uh, so I wouldn't mind having something go up and clean up behind me, especially like six months or a year afterwards. Uh, and, and it right. gets a warning. So, I mean, it puts, this is stale, and then it's going to come up in my GitHub notifications. I'm going to have a chance to be like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And then I can, you know, reopen or, you know, clean it up and try to get merged again or just let it rot. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I agree. Like some may argue that we should solve the issue of the PRs not getting addressed, but it's, I guess, different conversation. 
Um, yeah, but I guess it should be encouraged if, if somebody is just sitting there and waiting for his PR or hers to get reviewed, they should make it some appear either here or mailing list or where not. Anyway, any other notes or anybody against this? Awesome, so I guess we can close it. I will add an action item on me to edit my guide if it doesn't exist yet. Okay. Itamar, your item is the next on the engine that you want to present it. Hi, everybody. Um, so this is basically a, a first sketch for uh, live migration policies. Um, some people have already seen it and uh, an initial discussion has already started. So everybody that would like to take a look and comment and have questions or ideas or anything else is uh, invited to do so. To do so. Um, yeah, and that's it. Um, would you like to go with us through the doc and just give us an idea how we should like, read it and what to focus on just to give a small advertisement for it. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, would you like me to share the screen or something? Yeah, I guess that would help okay. if it works for you. Well, just a moment. So can you see my screen? I can, yes. Yeah, um, so basically the goal is to um, design and after, afterwards implement uh, live migration policies that can be defined globally in therapy app. Basically the idea is to give, uh, to give the system administrator control uh, to fine tune the migration uh, configurations and policies according to the VM's uh, workload or according to different priorities that he has. Uh, one, one example could be uh, to update the cluster. So if you wanna drain a node, maybe you want to uh, give those migrations a higher priority. Um, yeah, and there are, as I said, it's very initial. So there are um, several dilemmas and approaches and nothing uh, is determined yet. Um, so, um, so yeah, at the beginning, I, I, I basically talk about the goal, the possible um, stories that a system admin could, could have, um, use cases, um, design guidelines, and then some sketches of various ideas that, um, that popped into, into our heads. Um, yeah, this is very initial work, so it's a bit messy. Um, and you're, you, you all are welcome to read it and, and take part in the discussion. Um, yeah, nothing too special to, to show here. Looks interesting, thanks. Um, anybody has any question uh, for Itamar to clarify anything of this? Okay, awesome. Um, there is, this was the last item on the agenda. Does anybody want to bring up anything on the last minute now? Three, two, one. Okay. Um, the next section is pull requests that need attention. Uh, and there's one item. Does anybody want to promote that one? Yeah, I is just, uh, yeah. Yeah, I just. If anyone has time, uh, there is a PR that unifies the post devices uh, uh, handling into in a more structural way. So it is sharing the SRV, the the, whole, the generic host devices, and the GPUs together. And that's it. Why do we it's want like this? A, 
Oh, um, we want to, we don't want to have multiple ways to, like, currently it, it's a bit uh, distributed over the code. So there is no one place that implements it. And there are several, several ways to do the same thing. So this should be supposed to unify them all and have one way to do it and should be clearer, I hope. If it's not, I prefer this comment. It, in the end, in the end, it also should allow us to use, uh, in SRV, we have the ability to migrate with host devices. So what we do there, we unplug and then plug on the other side. So we, sh we could now use this, the same mechanism uh, with all. I, just, I think that that's a uh, following PR to extract this uh, unplug plug part from the SRV specific to be generic for all of them. I see. Cool. Thank you. Um, any questions for Ed? Um, I actually, um, sorry. I, I was just wondering if the design of the PR was discussed with uh, with Vladik before he went on vacation. Uh, because he, he, I mean, that's his code originally. I was wondering if uh, he had an opinion on that PR. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I just, yeah, oh, yeah, because I was on the vacation, I didn't get to, to review the PR. I'm back today. <laughs> okay. Oh, awesome. I, I thought you were still on vacation. <laughs> it is, it is, uh, I think I spoke with Radek about the, the idea. I, I guess the design is, is, um, I, I didn't, don't think we we had like a specific design. There was there is a there is an introduction in the in the PR about uh, the structure. So if you if anyone has a different idea, then you are welcome to to tell me. I'll adjust. Okay, thank you. Um. So the next section is the review of the mailing list. There were a couple of messages. Let me share my screen real quick. Um, okay, so I do, uh, I'll just skip those that have uh, plenty of attention, which is this one. Uh, another one is for Igor. Um, and he says the issue was resolved, so let's skip this one as well. New release of CDI, congratulations. Um, improved support for real-time VMs. So Jordi would like to propose changes to VMI, CRR, CRD schema aligned, blah, blah, blah. And he asks for comments. Uh, it has some from Vladek, it's great. Uh, let me just share it in the chat for anybody who would like to take a look. And on the agenda as well. Um, request for comments for RTVS proposal. Browser got stuck. Um, okay, the the next one, our meeting notes, and finally the last one from a week ago. IPv6 is persistent in bridge mode. Do not automatically configure IP. Uh, this is a no limitation, known limitation, and we discussed this one on the Slack channel for anybody who would like to follow the responses. Um, so that will be for the list and let's just spend the next 15 minutes or so with the issues, if you don't mind, to do some bug scrubbing. Uh, okay. So 
six scale convert modules are using more CPU than requested. Um, convert operator has some configured alerts to show if the controllers are using more CPU or memory than requested. In the following experiment, I create PMIs waiting until they are running, delete PMIs, blah, blah, blah. Anybody understands or is familiar with this um, enhancement proposal? And is this something we would like to have? Uh, maybe that's something we'll discuss in a little bit more detail in the six scale meeting tomorrow. Oh, right. Um, I don't, I don't know yet. Is the ask for an alert or yeah, configure alerts to show the controller is using more CPU than requested. Maybe, I don't know if there's a precedent. Does anyone know there's a precedent for this already with uh, maybe other operators or components? Anyway, we'll, we'll take care of it in uh, six scale. Okay, um, thanks, David. Okay. You just want to hear me talking, right? Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, we can. Uh, um, I wanted to reply to David that uh, we discussed it for starting with SSP operator that we look at the virtu uh, vertical and horizontal port auto scaler so we can analyze this and set limits. And that's the only reason we should try to keep those in balance, but I think there is no actual reason why we need to change those right now, except scheduling. And I think being on a high priority class, we should be fine. So we won't get killed. But that's, I think, the only reason to change it right now. Change the requests or add an alert? Uh, I guess the alert is there to know if we should, should change the requests. Uh, that's... But, yeah, that's the thing, well. Yeah, so I, if I think we the alert would only help us. It who wouldn't who help can yet. actually change the requests? Like, yeah. Uh, how would somebody actually, so if we're gonna create an alert, the um, one of the criteria for that alert is it needs to be actionable. If it's not actionable, Yeah. Don't I don't think the alert is useful for a cluster admin right now. Or I wouldn't know how, like, I, I don't think we allow specifying the requests and limits for them on our control plane. So I don't think they could do anything with it. They just get an alert they can't change anything with. Yeah, it wouldn't be useful. Yeah. Okay. But we, we, we can talk about it tomorrow. We'll see. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, Second one, some methods are missing a namespace parameter in open API specs, so it's regular JSON file. Anybody who is familiar with the Swagger so file and uh, in covert. Oh, 
I don't know how we generate it, but I think there should be namespace tags on those, yes. We have no space for anything else. You to guess, yeah. Um, third one. VMI failed for GPU 840, could not open, blah, 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 blah. ISO invalid argument. I guess we can start with the question whether this reproduces without the GPU. It doesn't seem to be related at all. Does this look uh, familiar to anybody? Good. Fails to enable a new methodology. And it is an active discussion, so I will. Ah! And it seems to be resolved, so I will just close it. VMI doesn't show IO error when it's access to boot disk is blocked. When the VM cannot access its boot disk, the VMI shows the following without the actual reason or failure. Does this make any sense to anybody? Yeah, I think the error is in the logs. Um, okay. Nope. What should be looking for? I think the complaint is maybe that the error is useless. It just says deadline exceeded. Yeah, I mean this is because um, Vert Launcher didn't manage to do to reply in a meaningful way. But there there should be something in in Vert Launcher, I guess. Um, he claims it has nothing. Um, it's blocking, uh, it sounds like. So, Vert uh, Launcher isn't responding because something within the sync VMI call is stuck. Uh, and my guess is that we're trying to access the storage, and it's just whatever is it's just blocked. So, the sync VMI call can't progress, which means it eventually times out. We never get an error because it's not an async. Ah. <laughs> nice. 
Um, so would it help if we get the virtual actual log and see just what's the last thing we heard about and then find the place in the code that's the, the next line or whatever? Usually that's the problem with NFS, that it can be just blocking. Um... But, but we should have a, like a timeout and then throw out an like, uh, actual error. Sure. Right. Uh, I mean, it can be improved, likely. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's going to take quite a bit of investigation. Quite a, somebody's going to have to investigate where Vert Launcher is blocking during the sync VMI call and figure out a way to time that out and report back an error to say, hey, we couldn't do whatever this operation was because storage is not responding to us. My expectation is that that might happen in multiple places. It's like fix one, and then it might go to another one, and then another one. <clears throat> so all of the cumulative timeouts there uh, would have to be less than the deadline timeout for us to be able to report the error back. I see. Okay, so it sounds reasonable. It's not a huge priority for us because it's not really broken, but it's just annoying. All right. Um, a spelling error. CRD. Okay. And there is a PR open for it. It's being reviewed. Okay, okay. Um, signals for it. please remove all before all usages in the test. Yeah, we I brought it up with my team and we will look into this when we find time, but it's certainly something we would uh, like to do. So I marked this accepted. Um, the next one. Image not found, RBD image not found. Occurred when I use data volume cloning with smart cloning. Blah, 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 blah. And there's, okay. Um, does this mean anything to anybody? Does not for me. And is this a covert covert issue or it should be should it be moved to C CDI, I guess? I, yeah, I don't really get. I this think we just said this last time, and it was said that this sounds more like CDI. Is there, was there somebody mentioned below? Uh, no. I know. I feel like I've seen this one before. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Doesn't seem like it, but um, would be a better form. I thought we had it in a scrub. Like I, I remember reading RDB in a in a bug scrub last time or two times ago. Okay, let me give it a try. RDB. 
Okay, maybe watch this one. Not spend too much time on it and just move it. Um, there's zoom to the CDR issue. And let's give them time to reopen it before we close it here. Um, Enhancement, uh, Fabian opened a couple of them seven days ago. Uh, templating mechanism for VMs. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't very enthusiastic, David. Well, this is, we, we so this is a big discussion. We need to understand uh, why we would need something beyond Helm for this, or another, I don't know what there is besides Helm and the ecosystem that does templating for us. But for us to invent our own templating, um, I don't know. Wasn't this one of the, um milestone issues where we said we're going to have a big discussion uh, every uh, weekly call around that and we put on the agenda and discuss it with everybody interested? Yeah, it is. It's on the V1 milestone seven days ago. Okay. I think Fabian would need, is it for this specific one, yeah. I think he'd need to be here to defend it because yeah. my inclination is to not do this. Unless anyone he's, else feels he's on like PTO they do. now, so I, I don't think we'll get him anytime soon. But yeah. I I discussed it a lot with him because we have the OpenShift templates in in with us, but um they were just like we we discussed if we can do something that is like more upstream, like there is Helm, but Helm never felt like the right thing for for this. And um, what what we can do to provide some some templating mechanism, um, also because Helm needs its own registry and all that kind of stuff. It didn't feel like it's that native templating for what we could use in a CR, um, but I think it's a bigger topic, and uh, we need a we need this on an agenda item and have more people here, including Fabian, to brainstorm about this. OK. So maybe yeah, we I'm should. Curious. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm curious what Helm wouldn't give us. What, what makes it more my, complex? You were saying my biggest problem. Yeah, yeah, my biggest problem with, with Helm, I, it's 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 very around in the Kubernetes uh, ecosystem and very well liked. I never saw it that way because it's like, it doesn't seem that Kubernetes native. I think they changed some stuff, but up until a while ago, you needed an additional registry where you put in your templates or your Helm charts and stuff like that. And that never felt right. Uh, because you, like, if we wanted to do that, if we wanted to ship that, we would need to, a way to ship our registry of templates with Qbert or OpenShift. Yeah, that makes sense. Because it's not based on CRs. Sense. Um, yeah, I'd like to explore that more. I think what we'll probably do for this topic is target the workflow that we want. So figure yeah. out like how, how do we want people to actually use this template mechanism and then figure out the technology um, that fits into it. Right. Uh, So starting with the OpenShift templates, we have a pretty good workflow with that, where we can directly create something that already exists in the cluster and just give it a few variables and then you yeah. get the thing. Uh, we want to achieve the same workflow. All right, thanks. So let's call up Fabian to join us. And 
let's do like one or two more we spend. I think all those it. milestones one we don't we don't need to go over because we we actually like last meeting we said we're we're gonna dedicate a whole meeting or the start of a whole community call to one every week. Um, so maybe we should put one on the next agenda and see how people respond to it or send a uh, and send a ma mail to the mailing list and say, hey, next week we're gonna discuss um, the user guide and groom those. Yeah, it does sound like these are way beyond a short box drop and yeah, for right. our discussion. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, okay, let's leave it at that. Do, do we have any favorite and with a form that's not on the PTOs that we can start with? Uh, I think the user guide, Chris probably wanted to be around. I don't know about release and support patterns. David, any any tendencies? Oh, for a topic. Um, we could probably Sweet. rule out the persistent container disk volumes. We'd want somebody uh, from kind of the storage realm to, to have that discussion. Let's we'll see who's on the call today. How do I even check? Yeah, I don't know who, who will be back next week. So. Let's see. Which one of these is the most explored one? Would it be the templating mechanism? I don't know, but I don't think Fabian will be back next week. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, yeah, no, uh, no reason to yeah. organize it here. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll try to do it offline and see when he's yeah. coming back. Okay. Um, so let's do one that's not by Fabian. I think we've been a while. This is six, seven days old. We should have. Uh, I think I've. Yeah, we've we've oh, talked about that yeah. one. Okay, and he created a PR. So let me just read this up by typing page. And I, think I think we didn't we, can... we didn't set the labels last time. Yeah. I think we can wrap it up for today. I'm yeah. It's terribly hot in here. I, I <laughs> okay. Uh, any closing words from anybody? Stay safe and have a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're done. <laughs> Thanks for leading us. I know that this was kind of a non-eventful meeting, but it's good to sync up. Thanks all. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. See you.